Hi, I'm Mark Mikulich, Technical Product Manager for Small Character Technologies at Squid Inc. Today, uh, we're going to discuss uh, how to back flush the nozzle on your Jetstream uh, print head. All right, you might be wondering uh, why we would be back flushing the nozzle on our Jetstream print head. Um, there, there are a few different scenarios. Um, the two most common would be uh, maybe you're having some print quality issues with the system. Um, or you're having some ink stream alignment issues with your system. Um, typically, if we're, if we're back flushing a nozzle, it is because of inkjet or ink alignment deviation issues, which subsequently can cause print quality issues too. Um, what can cause that is uh, some debris, maybe some, uh, a, an aggressive piece of dried up ink, whatever it might be, uh, behind your nozzle, um, that debris can uh, partially block your jet, uh, it can cause it to deviate, shoot off at an angle, whatever it might be. Um, this back flush procedure will allow us to get that debris removed uh, from behind the nozzle um, and get that recovered into the system, okay? Um, so first we're gonna look at where you can actually find that feature in the software, and then we'll discuss um, how to prepare yourself uh, to actually use this function, how to get the print head set up, uh, all that good stuff. If you're not familiar with uh, the inkjet alignment or what I even mean by that, um, we're going to insert a couple of, of handy images that show um, how the ink stream should be aligned. Um, typically when we're talking about the alignment, uh, we're referencing where our inkjet actually goes into the gutter tube or the return tube that recaptures the ink that we don't print with that goes back into the system. Um, so when we're talking about correct alignment, you'll hear us reference uh, the three o'clock position. That's from a perspective of the print head pointing away from you and the stream is going into the gutter at, uh, again, a three o'clock position. Um, so basically vertically it's centered, but horizontally we cheat it off to the right hand side. Um, we'll, we'll try to get a shot of that on the print head, but again, the images that we insert uh, into the video here will give a much better uh, visual aid as to what we're looking for. And uh, again, if you're not seeing that, if you're not seeing the correct alignment, that is why uh, we would be going into this back flush process. Okay, uh, first we're gonna locate where the back flush function is in our programming. Uh, so on our display, we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna go to ink system. And then you're going to see back flush nozzle, bottom center of the screen. I'm not going to click that yet, but we do want to have this uh, pulled up and ready for once we, uh, when we do have the print head situated uh, and ready to go for this feature. One thing I do want to point out is um, if you do have slightly older software on your Jetstream printer, uh, the terminology for this feature uh, has changed a little bit. So, on previous uh, software revisions, this was actually labeled as purge. Uh, now it's labeled as back flush nozzle with uh, the newer revisions. It does the exact same thing, whether it says purge or back flush nozzle, but I just want you guys to be aware, if you do see purge, that's perfectly fine. It's gonna do the exact same thing. All right, a couple of items we're gonna need uh, up front in order to run this uh, procedure. Uh, we're going to need some cleaning solvent, okay, so make sure you have a squeeze bottle of cleaning solvent and make sure that that cleaner matches the makeup base that you are using with your printer. If you're not sure, all you need to do is pull the makeup cartridge out of your machine, and verify that your cleaner matches your makeup. Uh, the other item you're going to need is the, uh, a hand dryer bulb. Every single Jetstream printer comes with one of these. Uh, make sure you do locate this and have it ready. Uh, after we uh, do the back flush process, we're going to need this to quickly dry off some of the hardware components in the print head. Uh, one other item you, you will also want to have for this process is uh, just some sort of uh, cleaning tray or catch tray. Uh, we will have a little bit of fluid dripping uh, off the head or running off the head when we do this. Um, every system does also come with just a little aluminum catch tray like this. It's a really good idea uh, to have this ready when we do take the print head out um, to have something to place it over. Okay. 
Okay, um, so now we're gonna take the print head out of the sleeve. Uh, the system is actively jetting. We're not printing, so print is off, um, but it is jetting. I do wanna point out the hydraulics have to be running in order to run this procedure, okay? Um, we still need to be generating a vacuum in the system that we can take advantage of for this back flush process. So in this scenario, um, we're basically working uh, in a situation where the inkjet is slightly deviated, uh, but it's not making a mess or anything like that. So we're just, we're having some print quality issues, um, but it's not a severe situation where the jet is, you know, completely missing our return gutter altogether and making a mess. Um, so we can take the print head out of the sleeve. Again, it is actively jetting. Um, and what we're gonna do ultimately is we need to take our cleaning solvent and we're gonna have to spray it at our nozzle here. Um, now, before we can do that, we need to actually activate the back flush procedure because right now the, the system is jetting, okay? Um, before I do any of that, what I will do is take off this inner stainless steel cover. Now, you don't have to do this, but it will give you a, a better visual idea of what's going on here. Um, what I mean by that is we're actually gonna be able to see uh, what we call a bleed line or the back flush line where the solvent that we are spraying at the assembly is, is being sucked back through. So we'll be able to visually see that fluid uh, going backwards through the head and back into the filtration system uh, of the printer. Uh, if you do wanna remove this inner cover to see what's going on, um, there are just four small Phillips screws that hold this in place. So all I'm gonna do right now is remove these screws, take the cover off, and then we'll be able to see what's going on. Okay, so now we have uh, access again to that bleed line or that back flush line, we call it. Um, so what we'll be able to see when we actually run this procedure is uh, we should see fluid traveling backwards through this line. Okay, so again, it's just a good visual aid uh, to make sure we're actually getting fluid through the assembly. This line also ties into this small back flush line here or bleed line as well. Um, so we'll see it, we'll see fluid traveling all the way through the head and again out to the filtration system. Okay, once you've got the print head out of the sleeve and set up so you're ready to do this back flush procedure, um, what you need to do is click the back flush nozzle button, or again, if you have older software, it might read as purge. Um, and what'll happen is you're gonna get a status bar that pops up on the display, um, basically telling you how much time you have uh, for this procedure to take place. Um, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be about a 10 second delay and then the ink stream is actually gonna deactivate in the print head. Um, so it's gonna close the ink valve in the head and just cut that stream off. The hydraulics are still running internally. Again, we have to do that so we can still generate a vacuum in the system. Um, so what happens is that the ink valve closes and then this uh, bleed valve, we call it, uh, or back flush valve, this will open and that will apply the vacuum that we need to the gum body assembly and to that nozzle, okay? Um, so basically when the inkjet shuts off, you need to be ready to, sp to spray solvent directly at the nozzle, all right? Um, this is an automatic process uh, as far as when it stops allowing you to do that and when it reinitiates jetting. You have about 20 seconds total. Um, so you spray solvent for a few seconds You'll see solvent traveling backwards through that back flush line or bleed line. Um, you're gonna stop spraying solvent again after a few seconds. You're gonna take your dryer bulb and you're gonna dry off your print head as best you can. And when we get close to that status bar going to 100%, we need to stop everything that we're doing because the system is gonna reinitiate or, or turn the inkjet back on. Okay, so naturally we don't want to be spraying solvent or hitting the head with air at that time. Um, so it's uh, fairly important you kind of keep track of what's going on on your display. 
Um, the system's telling you how much time you have left, uh, so just keep an eye on that. Again, it's a fairly quick process, so we'll physically do it now so you get a, a good uh, idea of how this works. Okay, so we're gonna hit back flush nozzle, and you'll see our status bar pop up here. Again, there's about a 10 second delay before the inkjet actually shuts off. You'll notice, uh, I'll point out during that time, our head is at an angle over the catch tray, so the fluid will run off here. So um, we're ready to spray solvent. And now if you notice, that back flush line, you can see my fluid traveling backwards. And that's all it takes. A few seconds, dry it quick as best you can and the inkjet is back on. Now you'll notice I didn't do a great job of drying this off. Um, there's still some, some solvent and some fluid down here. If that happens, um, you can go ahead and just do another uh, back flush nozzle cycle. You can spend less time spraying solvent at the nozzle and a little bit more time drying this off. So I'll do it one more time. I'm gonna click back flush nozzle Again, the inkjet is still running. There's a, a little bit of a delay here. You'll hear the valves cycle when it's done. Okay. So now I can spray solvent. And then we'll dry the head off as best we can. It's really important when you dry the print head off after you do this, that we especially get this charge tunnel dried out. Um, otherwise fluid can sit in there and when the jet reactivates, it'll make a little bit of a splash. So um, you'll notice there's still a little bit of solvent down here. Um, the solvent will kind of naturally evaporate on its own, um, or you can hit it with a little bit of air. But just let that dry up, and that's all there is to it. Um, if you do have uh, a situation where you do need to run this cycle, this back flush process, um, so again, we're working under the, uh, in a scenario where the inkjet is deviating a little bit, it's a really good idea you do this at least two or three times um, to make sure that uh, if that is the issue, you've got it corrected um, before we ever uh, go towards an actual physical realignment of the jet. So it's really important. Uh, 99% of the time, if you do have a deviated jet, it is because of debris or some dried up ink, and this back flush procedure is gonna take care of that problem for you. Another helpful trick here too, um, if you're done back flushing the nozzle and that's uh, corrected your inkjet deviation problem, um, and you still have maybe a little bit of a mess on the print head, um, you can use this to your advantage, the back flush nozzle feature in that situation as well. Um, to get the, just the print head in general clean. Um, you may have seen in our uh, previous video how to clean the print head. Um, we wanna make sure when we're done doing this that all those hardware components are still clean. Um, but again, if we wanna avoid completely shutting the printer off just to do that, we can click back flush nozzle, still let it run its process, but we don't have to spray solvent uh, directly at the nozzle at that time. Again, if our, if our problem has been corrected. What we can do is use that time to actually wash off the rest of the print head and dry it off, and then the system will just, uh, again, reactivate jetting uh, as normal. So um, what I'm gonna do is click back flush nozzle, clean the print head off, uh, just our critical hardware components, dry it off, and let the system start jetting again on its own. All right, uh, once your back flushing process is complete, uh, if you did remove this inner cover, um, of course, make sure that you put that back on. Um, now, again, the system is actively jetting. Um, if you're not comfortable putting this back on while there's an active ink jet, you can always uh, shut the system down, but if you're careful, you can get this on. Uh, like my system right now is jetting, uh, so we'd put those four screws back in, 
and then we're okay to slide the print head back into the sleeve. All right, uh, if you want to try to visually verify um, that your ink stream alignment is, is correct or isn't correct, um, there's a couple of really easy tricks. Uh, again, the, the alignment that we're looking for is what we call three o'clock position. That's uh, if you're looking at it from the back of the head, uh, sighting down the gutter tube, that stream should be vertically centered, but cheated off to the right. If you want to make sure that that's correct, there's two different ways you can look at this. One is, if you look at it from the side, it's good to have uh, a white background or a light background. Um, if you look from the side, you'll see our little black inkjet down here going into the gutter. And again, uh, when we're looking at it from the side, we're actually looking at uh, the vertical alignment, if you will. That should be centered vertically. If we want to look at the horizontal alignment, uh, an easy trick is just take a piece of white, a small piece of white paper and carefully slide it underneath the jet. So right between the gutter and these two deflection plates, you can fit a piece of paper in there and you'll be able to see that, that uh, stream of ink. And from this perspective, we want the jet to be cheating off to the right side. Okay, um, there's another possible scenario too with uh, uh, in a back flush situation. Again, if, if the inkjet is deviating um, and we have to do this back flush process, um, and that is if the jet is deviating so badly that it's basically completely missing the gutter altogether. Okay, so there's um, ink, you know, essentially just spraying all over inside the head. Um, if that's happening, what the printer is normally going to do is it's going to shut itself off. Um, there is a gutter sensor in the print head. It's going to recognize that there's no ink traveling back through the system. It's going to turn itself off. Um, we still need to be able to back flush the nozzle to fix that. Um, so we need to tell the printer to ignore the gutter alarm in that situation. So in order to do that, we would go into our settings page. Setting. And we would go to our alarm setting. The very first option in the alarm setting page is the gutter status or gutter alarm. We're going to turn that off. Okay. Basically what we're doing is telling the printer we don't care if there's no ink going into the gutter. We still need to be able to start up the hydraulics and run the system so that we can do a back flush process. So it's the same back flush procedure. Um, again, it's just in a scenario where the jet is so badly deviated, um, ink is basically missing the gutter altogether. Um, so we're bypassing the gutter, we're going to do our back flush, uh, that will hopefully correct the inkjet deviation, and when it does, we're just going to come back in here and re-enable the gutter when we're all done. If you do forget to do this, um, by default, if there's ever a power cycle to the machine, these alarms go right back to on. Okay. Right, thanks for joining us today uh, on learning how to back flush the nozzle of our Jetstream CIJ printer. Uh, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to see more videos on the Jetstream or any of our other products. And also uh, don't hesitate to visit squidink.com uh, for even more information on our product line. Thank you.